Ah, good evening, traveler. Welcome to the Penumbra. Detective Steele is knee-deep in one of his most unpleasant cases yet. He's been taken from his home in the dead of night, used as collateral in a deadly game of cards, and partnered with a super thief whom he finds quite... distracting. But this is his only choice if he's to stop the weapon he and Peter Nureyev are after. It's on that train, the Utgard Express. And if they leave by morning, all should be fine. Should be. But nothing in a PI's life is ever quite so simple, is it? What luck! It sounds like he's in. Come, traveler. Come with me into room J-16. Juno Steel and the train from nowhere. Judo, what in the hell was that? Sure wasn't the tooth fairy. Hit the light. Do you know this person, Juno? No, but with a gun that size, I don't think she was coming by to ask for a cup of sugar. Then who... Let's just get the hell out of here, all right? Did she hit you? Of course not. Didn't even fire. Juno, you're bleeding. There's blood all over your cheek. I... Must be a nosebleed or something. A nosebleed? It's all the way up I to said your... let's go. I take it you didn't order room service. Excuse me, Mr. Rose. Is everything all right in there? We thought we heard gunfire. Could just be a hotel employee. Oh, yes, and we'll politely explain that we thought an assassin skin rug would really complete the room's decor. Mr. Rose, open this door, please. We wouldn't want to have to force it. The window. Now. Hot, stale sim wind blew in through the open window. Outside the dome... Beyond that, a mean little sun burning on the red horizon and an endless wind-swept desert from below. I'd left a corpse behind me, and with it a couple dozen goons who wanted to make me a corpse. Typical sunrise over the Martian desert. Sometimes I really hate this planet. So, you got an escape plan? Four. would be much of a burglar if I didn't. Now come along, down the ladder. When you've made a career out of getting into trouble for as long as I have, it's easy to convince yourself that you've seen it all, that it can't get any worse. Well, listen, buddy. There's one thing I know from 38 years on this great red dust cloud in the sky. It's that it can always, always get worse. In there. Hurry. Nerea, the only way I'm going to fit in there is if you break both my shoulders and fold me in half. Believe me, Juno, you make that very, very tempting. Now go. (laughs) Take this lousy case. Two days ago, I thought I had a lead on a criminal mastermind. Yesterday, I found out I'd be working with one to con a retired burglar, break into a top-secret train, and steal a doomsday weapon. Six minutes ago, I had to kill someone before my morning bagel and cloned beef hash, and six seconds ago, I took a two-story plunge down a garbage chute and into, well, where a garbage chute goes. Why do I do this? Why why would anyone put up with this? No idea, detective. Money, perhaps? Can't stand the stuff. Well, glad you made it. This is trash. If you look to my left, you'll see more trash. Bring a shower and a few vaccinations, won't fix. Now, time for shoot number two. In you go. You first. Juno, what did we say about trust? If we're going to work together... Then I'm going to have to see both your hands at all times, right? Juno. Sudden movements are also probably a no-no. Fine. I don't have time to squabble with you. We went that way for a while. Down chutes, through vents, cutting along dusty service hallways... I didn't ask how Nureyev knew those things were there. He was a criminal with very powerful friends, one of whom wanted me dead very, very badly. That unsettled me, to say the least. Peter Nureyev unsettled me in a lot of ways. There! Here at last, Detective. The garage. Took you long enough. You've got to be kidding me. 
After all that, you brought us to the wrong garage? Don't be ridiculous. I never get lost. This is the VIP garage. I didn't park here. Did I ever say anything about your car? I don't believe so. We'll find a much more effective transport here. Nothing wrong with my car. The inspection sticker is three years out of date. I'm busy, all right? It's a death trap, Juno, and you really ought to get a new one. Oh, what do you care how old my death trap is? Ah, here we are. The vehicle of the hour. License plate says Ruby 7. Is this Engstrom's car? Indeed. Engstrom may be a sham of a burglar, but this car, the Ruby 7, legendary. The bane of law enforcement across the galaxy, its mere existence, is the most closely held secret in crime. This is the car that Jet Sekuliak used to steal the iris of Jupiter. It's wasted on a man like Engstrom. And now we're going to give it to a thief who can really use it. You. Why not? Looks better on me anyway. We're not just taking this car because you like it, right? Certainly not. There's still some information we need, and I have a hunch that Engstrom keeps that information somewhere in the Ruby 7's databanks. Ha! Just as I suspected. Take a look at this. The drone's launch location. But that's not what Engstrom gave you. He must have thought himself very clever for that one. Well, Juno, let's catch a train. We're off to an early start, at least. We'll drive out to the delivery drone's location now, have some breakfast, and catch the Akgard Express before sunup. You really think it's going to be easy as all that? Absolutely. Give or take a few life-threatening perils. Did you see the look on the kid's face when he called us in? What the thing's going to be sick? Ah, right on cue. Who's that? Oasis uniforms. Looks to be a security detail. I didn't think Engstrom would call us in this quickly. You hear about this? Walt said they found a body up in one of the rooms. Walt's a liar. Remember that time he said he found a damn dragon in one of the tubs? It was a dragon! A real kimono dragon, I swear! And, hey, isn't that Mr. Engstrom's car? They're watching us. Drive natural. Very helpful, Detective, but it may be a bit too late for that. Well, I suppose that leaves only one option. What the hell are you doing? Something I'll regret later. At top speed, the Ruby 7 should be enough to shatter that barrier, but I'm afraid the paint will never be the same again. Hey, you! Cut your engine and step out of the vehicle. Now! You can't drive through those guards. They're just doing their jobs. Quit it. You cannot kill them without a warning or something. Well, all right. Hello? Hello, gentlemen? You got into the count of three, buddy. That's plenty of time. My associate insists I inform you that I am about to crush you with this vehicle. One? I said crush you with this vehicle. He said one, not what. What? I said crush you. He heard what you said. Well, then, I suppose he's been informed, hasn't he? Hit the deck! Damn it, that's not what I meant! (laughs) (laughs) Exhilarating, isn't it? Now this is the Ruby Seven's element. Civilization far behind us, nothing but open desert ahead. Keeping this car cooped up in some dingy garage. Crime against crime itself. Engstrom should have lost it years ago. Pull down the window, I think I'm about to lose it. Well, it seems we have company. Ruby, accept call. Mr. Rose, good morning. Good morning, Engstrom. Say hello, Juno. Who? You've made a grave error, Rose. I don't believe I've ever heard of someone signing his own death warrant before breakfast. Don't be so hard on yourself, Engstrom. I'm too busy to kill you today. You handed me the greatest getaway car there is, and now I plan to make the greatest getaway. Oh, I highly doubt you will. The drone launches very soon, after all. It would be a shame if you were... delayed. What the hell is that? Your delay. Good luck, gentlemen. Careful you don't miss your train. <laughs> We've got four cars on our tail. And by the sound of it, they're armed. Can't the Ruby 7 outrun them? You said it was supposed to be the fastest getaway car, right? I said it was the best, Juno, not the fastest. It's capable of short bursts of speed. What the hell is the difference? How are you supposed to get away if you can't go fast? Like this. Ruby, analyze our situation for optimal escape scenario. So? Shh, it's trying to concentrate. Oh, that makes sense. Wouldn't want to break the car's focus. Can I get anything to help? Cup of tea? Get out and give the hubcaps a little massage? Or maybe it'd be faster if it just bought us some coffins. No need. If we'll require coffins, it's already ordered them. Oh, good. Good. That's good. It's a fool who thinks the greatest getaway car is the fastest, Juno. 
There are hundreds of things one can do to stop a car in its tracks, and then of what use is speed? What one needs is not velocity, it's strategy. The maneuver to avoid the roadblock, to jam the radar, to shield the electromagnetic pulse. And the Ruby 7 is the only vehicle in the galaxy that can do just that. Strategize. Bless you. So what, it's gonna give us a route or something? Perhaps. Or maybe something a bit more concrete. What's this supposed to be? A rifle. Congratulations. Evidently the car believes you to be our optimal escape scenario. Now get to it. Kind of hard to hit a target moving at the speed of sound, Nereev. Certainly. I doubt I would be able to hit them, but your track record suggests otherwise. <laughs> your research say that? Oh, don't give me that tone. Your examinations in the Hyperion City Police Academy are a matter of public record. There's nobody easier to track than a government employee. The government does most of the work for you. This relationship seems pretty one-sided is all. You seem to know a hell of a lot about me, and I don't know the first thing about you. You know my name. Very generous. It's hardly my fault you don't know more. You could have looked into me at any time. Your secretary is quite skilled in that way, as I recall. Hmm. So, why haven't you then? Shut up, I'm trying to concentrate. Ruby says the nearest shooter is on our 7 o'clock. Not anymore, they aren't. Well done, detective. That was all right. I don't think Engstrom and his goons liked it. The launch site is just in the distance. Once we make it there, the Ruby 7 will handle them without us. What? I'm not going to be able to take out all these cars. Every dune we pass, another one pops out. <whistles> Nureyev, I kind of need to know the plan here. Well, if we can't lose them, they'll just have to lose us. <whistles> Route set. We're going to pull around that boulder up ahead, and then you and I will jump out of the Ruby 7. What? While they're chasing our car, we'll be chasing that drone. Ruby, maximum power to the engines. <whistles> Nearly there. Wait for my signal. Isn't that the noise that makes something bad's about to happen? There's no time! Jump! Ooh. Next time, I'm driving. <laughs> the hatch down into the drone launch area is right in here. Down here, quickly. So, did you get a look at what that warning was all about? I didn't. A bit too busy tumbling across the Martian desert, I'm afraid. You know how it is. That doesn't worry you. Of course it worries me, but there's nothing to be done about it now, is there? We'll just have to move carefully. Do we have time to be careful? Of course we do. What the hell is that? Drone launch commencing in one minute. Update. We no longer have time. Run, quickly. Drone launch commencing in 50 Yeah, we get it, thanks. Look, the drone, go. The hell happened to being careful? There's no time, go! Going into that drone without scanning ahead first didn't feel so hot. The thing was about the size of one of those overpriced micro-studio apartments in uptown Hyperion. Just big enough for something to hide in. And just small enough that once we were inside, there'd be nowhere to run. Launch in three, two, one. But Nureyev was right. There was no time. We ran inside. And the door locked shut behind us. Delivery commencing. Finally. That was a really long morning. Certainly not a pleasant one, but here we are. Overall, I'd say things couldn't have gone smoother. And I would have to agree. Angstrom! Hands up, Rose. I wouldn't want to show you what my gun could do to your friend here. You've been waiting for us here, haven't you? Indeed. Ever since we sent in your wake-up call this morning. I'd hoped she'd be able to bring you in without all this trouble, but I suppose we can sort out the trouble now. Valencia, please kill Detective Steele. I would love to. Out of the way, Rose. If you so much as singe him, I'll never tell you how to stop that train, and then where would you be? It would be deliciously ironic, wouldn't it, to be trapped forever on the train you've sought so long? Fine. Then he lives. So long as you cooperate. We'll board that train, you'll show us how to stop it, and then we'll take what we want. Starting with whatever draws you to it so forcefully. <laughs> if that train can draw even a man of mystery like you, Rose, there must be something truly special aboard it. Last stop, the Utgard Express. Watch your step, gentlemen. 
ammo. You know, one of the main features of a gun is that you don't need to wedge it into someone's spine to make it work, right? Of course I don't need to, hun. I just like to. Walk faster. Ow. The first of the vaults should be just through this door. Valencia, the master key, please. Thank you. And now, at last... Yes, this is it! Ingstrom's eyes were so wide I thought they might crack open his skull. I understood why. Those shelves sparkled like some open sesame treasure cave, glimmering and glinting in the gray fluorescent light. If you were going to spend your whole life chasing after one big score, this was a good one to pick. My god, look at all this! The Empire's crown, the sunken treasure of the Atlantis probe, Vulcan sapphire! <laughs> they were supposed to be lost! Every last one of them lost! And here they are! So we've heard. Well, Rose, I think it's about time you show what you can do. You've claimed you can stop this train, now you'll have to show us how it's done. You want to stop the Utgard Express now? <laughs> oh, excuse me, it's just a relief. I was worried for a moment that you knew what you were doing. Don't get smug yet, Rose. I know just as well as you do that the most valuable of the Utgard's possessions must lie deeper within the train. But I also know that giving you any more time than necessary is dangerous. And so, you will not stop the train right now, but you will explain how it can be stopped. Or else... We know, or else what? It's always the same. You really don't have to... And there it is. Well, if you insist... Take your hand away from that pocket, Rose. If you have something in there, Valencia will remove it for you. I would really rather she... Oh, well, there she goes. It's a small rectangular object with round buttons. Be careful not to press them. Is this what you mean? Unfortunately, yes. How does it work? You said it yourself, Angstrom. You've spent years and years studying the Utgard Express. If there were any way to stop this train, you would know about it. Therefore, the trick isn't to stop the train. You have to stop the tracks. The hell is that supposed to mean? Any vehicle which moves by magnetic force is moved not only by itself, but by the magnetic thrust of its tracks. So if you interfere with the tracks... Hmm, go on. Once I received the tip you gave to catch my interest, the route of the Utgard Express, I went out to that route and placed a small device there. A cutting-edge electromagnet. As the train passed, my device attached itself to the train's underside, and when you press that button there... It will release an electromagnetic field strong enough to block the repellent force of the train's tracks. There's no magnet strong enough. Not that you know of, certainly. But I live in a world of things you don't know, Engstrom. Not for long, Rose. Not for long. But how can we be certain this will work? If you'd like to test it, that light glows when it comes within range of the magnetic jammer. The radius of effect is rather small, however. You may have to get quite low to see it. Some device, Rose. It doesn't even register on the floor. Well, you'll just have to hand it to me, then. We'll handle this, I think. Valencia, there's a crawl space beneath that shelf. Check to see if the device picks up anything down there. And if Mr. Rose tries anything, Detective Steele will pay for it. Oh, what else is new? Juno, a word. Take a couple. You've earned them. I know you put your trust in me on the Ruby Center. I'm sorry to have disappointed you. I certainly hope to make it up to you... If you'll give me the opportunity. Yeah. When do you plan to get that opportunity, exactly? That's enough. Oh, right now, I expect. Ah! Ah! Hold on! What? Now! Let's have to... I'm stuck down here! Now! They're getting away! In here! There's no room! Well, you'll have to make room! This is... kind of tight. Shh! There. I think we're safe. Well, as safe as can be expected, given the circumstances. Yeah, speaking of which, what the hell was that? Precisely what I promised. I demonstrated how to stop the train. I only pulsed the brake, and so the security team should be none the wiser. But... You left the brake with Engstrom. In two seconds, he's going to stop this thing and take whatever he wants. What brake? Oh, you mean that box? No, no, that's a television remote. The real brake is hidden in my cufflink. You... You put that remote there on purpose, didn't you? You planned all of this out. Of course. Wow, that's actually... Is what I'd like to say. But I'm afraid I put the remote in my pocket without thinking and forgot it was there. Ah, figures. But here we are. 
worked, didn't it? Yeah, I guess... I guess it did. Not too shabby. Well, they aren't off the train yet. Let's not let it get shabby until then. We've been disarmed, and what's worse, Engstrom knows this train well. It will be easy for him to lay a trap if we take him on directly. So we just sneak around and let him take whatever he wants? If Engstrom doesn't know when the train's going to stop, he can't plan his getaway. Ours is accounted for. If we manage to avoid them long enough to get the weapon, we should be able to stop the train, drive off into the sunset, and let Utgard security handle Engstrom. The train's one big straight hallway, Narev. I don't see how we're going to sneak through that. We won't be using that hallway. We'll be making our own. Now, if I can just find that cutter... Ow. Hey, hey, watch it! There isn't much room in here, Juno. You'll have to be patient. Room or no room, it doesn't mean you can just stick your elbow in a guy's... Keep yourself busy, would you? You want to arm yourself. There must be something you can use on these shelves. Fine. Ah! Just what I was looking for. Is that... a box cutter? The Utgard Express's defenses are in its speed, you know, not its durability. If you want to make something move quickly, you trade away weight. But you're not kidding. That thing's peeling away the wall like a banana. If you need a plasma cutter to peel your bananas, Detective, I might suggest you find a different grocer. There it is. <sighs> Finally. Get in there, I can barely breathe. Do it yourself, doorway. Not bad. To the master thief, dear detective, doors are but suggestions. Have you found a gun? I found something that looks like a gun, but. But? It's huge. Laser cart's big as my thumb. It's dangerous. Real dangerous. What the hell are we doing? A train full of stuff this powerful. They must keep it all here so people can't touch it. And we're gonna take it with us? These things are better in our hands than miasmas, Juno. But... And this is the only way to ensure she never gets them. I know an expert with a shop in the Cerberus province. We'll take the worst of it to him, and he'll destroy it all for us. Mars will be safer for what we've done here. Sure. Sure, if you say so. Now, come along. Before Engstrom puts his hands on something we'll regret. We kept walking that way for a while, carving a tunnel through the storage rooms. I didn't like how that pistol felt in my hand. It was too comfortable. Too powerful. Cerberus province. The closest thing to a pirate's cove we had in this century. A den of thieves thriving in the shadows of nine Martian volcanoes. We were bringing the weapon there? Enough power to wipe an entire civilization off the planet, and Nerea wanted to deliver it to a city of criminals. This is the end of the line. I'll have to cut through the main hall quickly to make it to the final chamber. Are you ready? Yeah, sure. Fine. Careful in here, Juno. This room is dangerous. You aren't kidding. All those things on the shelves, bombs? Not all of them. That would be absurd. Some are missiles, torpedoes, chemical weaponry. Here we are. The door to the final chamber. No sign of Engstrom or Valencia. Trap. I'll scope out ahead. Be prepared to cover me. I'll tell you when it's clear. Got it. It looks like everything's clear. The hell? Hey, open up! Open the goddamn door! Who's there? <laughs> Valencia! Damn it, stop being so creepy. <laughs> Her voice echoed through the room, skidding over shelves and bouncing off bombs. The gray light cast shifting shadows over everything. She could have been anywhere. It felt like she was everywhere. I had to hide. You'd be an idiot to fire a shot in here, you know. One stray laser and you'll set off enough explosives to crack Mars like an egg. If you're shaking over a stray laser, little detective, shake no longer. I never miss. Bullets aren't all I have to offer, of course. But you... Juno Steel. Without that little gun of yours, who are you? Still Juno Steel, actually. Names are funny like that. It all comes back to names, doesn't it? Like that friend of yours. What's his name again? Friend? No, you must be mistaken. I don't have any friends. Doctor says I'm naturally unpleasant. He's not your friend, then. But when I see the way Rose looks at you, it makes me think you two must be... Friendly. The hell is that supposed to mean? Ooh, no need to bite, big man. Must have touched a nerve.
Did you just enjoy this or something? So if you're not friends, and you're not friends, then why are you helping him rob this trade? You used to be a lawman, didn't you? What? Mm, you must have a very good reason. Letting a man like him on a train like this full of big, scary secrets. Helping a master thief to steal the galaxy's greatest getaway car. Look, I didn't have a choice. We needed that car to get on this train. The Ruby Seven? <laughs> oh, detective. You didn't need the Ruby Seven to get onto the Utgard Express. Of course we did. Your boss gave us bum coordinates. The real ones were in the car. You didn't even need Engstrom to get on board the Utgard Express. You know that, don't you? People have been working for decades to get on board this train. There were a dozen thieves your Rose could have talked to. And yet, conveniently, he brought you to Engstrom. To the Ruby Seven. That's just a coincidence. You're a detective, detective. Do you really believe in coincidence? Overhead, a light flickered. And that's when I saw the shadow, stretching around the next corner. I put my back to the wall. No time to look. Spin and fire, spin and fire. Detective, where are you? The shadow was perfectly still. She didn't expect a thing. It was the perfect opening, and I took it. <laughs> Only problem. It wasn't an opening on, you know, Valencia. Detective? Standing in the middle of the aisle was a tall, thin canister. Danger, do not open, was written on its side. My laser had written something shorter and sweeter into its lid. What did you just shoot? What's that sound? Just, uh, sprung a leak. That's gas, isn't it? You didn't! You... <laughs> well, on the one hand, detective, you've ruined my fun. But on the other, you have made my job much easier. Job? The hell is that supposed to mean? Valencia! Damn it, get back here! We were running for the door. She locked us in here. I couldn't leave without her. If she got back to that door before I did, it would be a long, painful death in the poison fog. I rounded the last corner, saw the door, and across the room, I saw Valencia. Detective. <coughs> Open the door, Valencia. We're dying here. You are, maybe... But you were next to the source of the gas leak. You ran all the way here, took who knows how much of that bad air into your lungs. Me? I'm as fresh as daisies, detective. Fresh as... <coughs> Careful, Valencia. Your cell by day is showing. Yours will come sooner. Then I'll step right over you. You. Don't move. If you take one more step towards that door, Detective, then I shoot this warhead and send us all to Kingdom Come. You're bluffing. If you make it through there, what's left for me? Death, if I'm lucky? Prison bars, if you're feeling cruel? No, I hope it doesn't come to that. But I'll do it if I have to. <coughs> <coughs> You'll die whether or not I blow up this train, you know. You said that, yeah. It would be a neat solution then, wouldn't it? Set off the bombs. It would destroy whatever is on board this train that you can't let fall into the wrong hands. So why not? Just stubborn, I guess. It's not going to work out between you and Rose, you know. <coughs> what makes you think? Opposite sides of the law. And you playing right into his hands, giving him the Ruby Seven, giving him whatever's on the train that scares you so much. Rose and Engstrom, they're just thieves, Steel. The only difference is that one of them makes you feel all funny inside. If I die now, will you shut up? <laughs> I'll certainly consider it. <coughs> 
mean in that case? <coughs> Steel? Detective? stumbled for the door. My eyes swam. The door bucked. Valencia's key was easy enough to find. It's about time. Get this man off me immediately. She's going to have a hard time doing that where she's gone. No. Juno! Quickly, shoot him. I can only hold him for so long. Nureyev had Engstrom from behind. Pinned like that, Engstrom looked pathetic. An old man fighting an old grudge, a thief, forgotten by everyone but himself. But Nureyev... Nureyev was the fox, grinning, his teeth bared. A face like that had tasted blood before and found it sweet as milk. And so the question remained, did I trust this man? Juno? Juno, what are you doing? Let me go, Steel. Release me and I'll I'll give you whatever you want. Money, a job, whatever you're on this train for. Anything, Steel. Anything you... Oh! Whew. Thank you, If we're going to work together, then you're turning the Ruby 7 to the HCPD as soon as we're done here. Got it? Juno, what? I'll help you stop the weapon, but at the end of the day, you're a thief. And I'm a guy who hunts down thieves, and that's the end of him. Letting you take that car is like signing off on a hundred unsolved crimes across the galaxy, and I'm not going to do it. Got it? Understood. I misread the situation. I'll turn in the car. It's a shame, but you've made your point. Good. Now are we going to get off this stupid train or what? Forgetting something? Engstrom, we'll just let the security team clean him up. No, Juno. The weapon. Are you feeling all right? I will be. Maybe. Let's grab the thing and go, okay? If you insist. If I'm not mistaken, this is what we're looking for. The Egg of Purus. Registered by the central government of Olympus Mons. The clasps should be right... Here. And there it is. It doesn't look like much. Weapons like this never do. There. Sealed. This will call the Ruby Seven. And then the train. Brace yourself, Juno. It hit us like well, a freight train. Whoa! Grab onto me, Juno. Once the train comes to a stop, I'll carve a hole through the wall. Get ready! (laughs) That was a hell of a ride. Grab the box and let's go. The Ruby 7 should be waiting for us. It took me a while to find my feet and a while longer for my feet to find the floor. I was up to my gills and gas, and I'd been shaken, rattled, and rolled halfway across Mars. I picked up the case and started walking. Hurry up, Juno. The security team will be here any second now. The hell is this egg made out of? Titanium chickens? The Ruby 7 should be... Yeah? Nureyev? Where the hell is the car? It should be here already. I I told it to... The security team. Juno, take out your gun. We'll have to shoot our way... That was faster than expected. That wasn't me. My gun isn't even out. Is that... Is that the Ruby 7? It is. Hello, thief. Juno Steel. You two look like you could use a ride. 
That voice. I had heard that voice before. No. I'd never heard it. Not really. I'd thought it. Received it. I felt it bounce around in my skull when I took that ugly little mind-reading pill months ago. I'd never really gotten it all the way out of my head, honestly. I could still feel it crawling around in there late at night. Words. A voice. With a dark little mind of their own. Miasma. Indeed. Get in the car, gentlemen. Sorry, lady. I was always taught not to talk to strangers. Funny. Assistants. The three masked lackeys loaded into that car all brought out their guns. And they were all pointed at Nerea. Well, this hardly seems equitable. Juno Steele, drop the crate. Get in the car. Now. Something made me think Nureyev wouldn't be getting in the car. Nureyev wouldn't be getting anything more than a laser bolt in a shallow grave in the Martian desert. I didn't know how to stop Miasma. I didn't know what she wanted, what leverage I had on her, and without knowing that, this moment could have played out a thousand times and I'd lose every one. Get in the car. I didn't know what she wanted, but I could. Yesterday, when I needed it, the schematics for Valencia's dummy cigarette just popped into my head. This morning, I'd heard an assassin's thoughts in my doorway. So why not now? Juno, get in the car, please. I can hold my own out here, you know that. I reached blind into the dark of my own mind, and then I felt it in there, cold and hard and real, her voice from months ago. I pulled. Ah! Juno, your eye is bleeding. That's enough. Grab him and kill the thief. If you even touch him, this laser goes straight through my brain. And why should I care where you put your lasers, Juno? Because you need me. I don't know why, but you do, and that puts you in a pretty bad position, Miasma. Fine. The thief lives, but he comes with us. Oh, like hell he does. Don't overestimate your value. There are other ways to get what I want from you. I would rather this be easy, but the moment you cause more trouble than you are worth, the thief dies. Load the egg, and keep your guns on the thief at all times. We're leaving. As the Ruby Seven hummed across Mars, I tried to find her thoughts again. Then I wished I hadn't. And so on. The same thought over and over again, as empty and as endless as the Martian desert. I didn't ask for this key into people's heads. I didn't ask for this thief beside me or the backflips it made my stomach do every time I saw that gun up against his temple. I didn't ask for the way he made me feel, either, like a plant in the dark, needing light, growing towards even the smallest needle of sun, desperately straining for every pathetic millimeter. Cheer up, detective. We stole the weapon once, we merely need to steal it again. It may seem impossible now, but has that ever stopped us before? It hadn't. Not yet. And suddenly I wished it never would. I wish we could keep on doing this for as long as we felt like. Conning Engstroms and stopping Valencias. Running just ahead of the impossible. I wanted to outrun the end of the world with this man. Because finally, I trusted Peter Nureyev. I wanted to keep trusting him, and odds are a thousand to one that by this time tomorrow, he would be dead. (laughs) They say half of comedy is timing, and boy, I picked out just the moment for my punchline. There it is, gentlemen. Your final resting place. A Martian tomb on the horizon. Tall spires, a jagged, twisting mouth. The final resting place. For me... Nereev, all of Mars. Juno. His hand touched mine. Don't give up on me. We'll make it through. I know we will. I looked up at those clear eyes, the cutting teeth of his smile, and suddenly I knew too. 
The spires grew taller, the mouth closer, and then it swallowed us whole. If you've enjoyed this tale, please consider supporting the Penumbra on Patreon. Every dollar helps. You can find that page at patreon.com slash the Penumbra podcast. If you support us on Patreon at the $10 level or higher, you will receive access to commentary tracks like this one from co-creator Sophie Kaner and the voice of Peter Nureyev, Noah Simes. I reach back and grab whatever it was that he was, you know, that he, that he had percolating. Yeah, which is, which is in such contrast to Juno, who, like, thinks about his lines, like, when he's you know, at home by himself. Right. Like, he has <laughs> them prepared in yeah, advance. Yeah, yeah. But Nureyev is just, is just very quick. Yeah. yeah, and I will say the other, the other piece of Nureyev that um, he's a little... He's a little we would like to give special thanks to all who support us on Patreon, but especially to Hannah Jim, Elizabeth Miller, and Angel Acevedo for their incredibly generous contributions per episode. Thank you. You can also support The Penumbra by liking us on Facebook, following us on Twitter at The Penumbra Pod, following us on Tumblr at The Penumbra Podcast, telling your friends about us, telling your friends to tell their friends about us, and especially by rating and reviewing our podcast on iTunes. Every rating, comment, and kind word spreads our stories farther and inspires us to keep creating more and better tales to come. This tale, Juno Steel and the Train from Nowhere, was told by the following people. Joshua Elon as Juno Steele, Noah Symes as Peter Nureyev, Emery Westlake as Brock Engstrom, Christy Norris as Valencia, and Kate Jones as Miasma. On staff at the Penumbra, Kevin Vibert is our lead writer and recording engineer. Sophie Kaner is our director and sound designer. Graham Turner is our script editor. Original music by Ryan Vibert. The Penumbra is created and produced by Sophie Kaner and Kevin Vibert. I'm so sorry you've been called away, dear traveler. We eagerly await your return.